Okay, good. So we're, we're getting toward the end of uh, Mishi's book on end game techniques, and we're getting into some of the um, uh, more advanced concepts, uh, which are uh, more challenging and more interesting. And, but also, they're the kinds of things that, that uh, don't come up that often, but when they come up, it's very important that you recognize the situation. Um, uh, and, and, and play it right. Otherwise you, you can make a big error. So, uh, this is chapter eight, by the way. So start with this, we're going to talk, uh, about this position and well, let's take a look at what, what do you think is the right uh, play from here? We have a four, one to play. I guess the question is, do we split our bike men? And I've no idea what the answer is. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Here's and and if you're, and this is why you need to become familiar with us because until I became familiar with us, it would never have occurred to me to do this. Okay, because that looks just looks like you're doubling the chances of getting hit, uh, which actually you kind of are. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So the, the, Ray's got the right. The right question is, do you split or do you not split? Um, and so, uh, I think the, you know, at the level that kind of, of these, uh, lessons, we're trying to get you to recognize the, the pattern and, uh, and then make a determination from that, what the right thing to do is uh, the, the advanced players and kind of the next level up from where we are is going to actually count, you know, count shots in this case, count your opponent's. Uh, or, or go through your opponent's roles and see which ones make sense or not. So, uh, you know, that's the advanced way to do it. Um, uh, it's much, it's, you know, it's much more difficult than recognizing the pattern. But in here, uh, and, and so I don't want to spend all, a lot of time going over, you know, counting all the shots, but, but that's the right way to do it. And we'll have to do it a little bit to understand it. So, but first let's look at the answer. Um, and it is to split. And in this case, it's not a big error if you don't split, uh, but the right answer is to split. And, and the reason is, if you, if you go over your opponent's uh, roles next time, uh, you'll see that uh, a lot of them, this will give you a, a double shot. Uh, obviously, if your opponent rolls with two one, you're not gonna do it. It gives you some really bad rolls, double ones, double twos. Uh, any other doubles are bad anyway, regardless of what you did. But, uh, you know, roles like, you know, 6 1, 5 1, um, you know, 5 2, 3, 3 2, things like that. Uh, your, your opponent is forced to, you know, vacate the five point with at least one checker and then either hit you or, uh, um, or stay, giving you the double shot. And if he hits you, then you've got a shot from the bar and you've got an extra shot, extra couple of rolls. So if he rolls like a four one and oops, and I'm sorry, if you roll, we're in this position, if he rolls a four one, uh, maybe he'll hit you and come off the bar. And now we're on the bar. Okay, now we've got direct fives and we've got uh, four twos to hit, three twos to hit, six twos to hit. Um, so we've increased our chances of hitting from that position. Now, um, the way that uh, uh, me, what Michi calls this is the last line. Uh, so if you've got, if we've got a, uh, a point and we've got a what he calls the last line, which is this, that's when you should look at it. He provides a couple of other examples. And he clearly leaves it at that, but it's a little bit more than that. Um, he provides this example. Uh, and so what, so just, do we think this is better or worse? I think it's worse for us. Yeah, and, and why? And it's really this. Well, it's hard, it's, it's less likely to plot, I think. Oh, I'm sorry, what did you say, Ray? Well, 
he's not he's, he's much less likely to leave Blanc. yeah you're yeah, right leave, well yes it, there's that because he's got these spares here yeah uh, okay. and also he has there's what you know what's the what's the play that he could do with like a two three one four it's it's a pick and pass like for instance if he got a two three he's going to take this go with two putting that checker on the bar and then come off okay so now we're on the bar um you know we may dance uh we may come in with six um or at the best case, we come in with a three and then move something else and we're back to where we were. But there are a lot of bad options here. So, um, let's put it back. Just looking at the at the, the answer here. And it's still slightly right to, to split, but it's not as good. You know, this is the, this is the non-splitting play and it's, it's basically the same. As, as doing that. So it's, it's, it's less good. Now let's take away another checker from black. Now what, now what about it? Oops. Yeah, better to split. Yeah, now if we think about some of the numbers that, that black could get, um, you know, any combinations of four, fives, and six that aren't doubles, you know, leave you this, where he's got to take two, two off there, and you know, and he comes up there, and, and now we've got now we've got the double shot. Um, there, you know, if he gets and if he gets a high number of four or four, five or six, and a one or two, okay, he's going to lift that checker and take it off, and we're left with the you know the same position we were before, and we don't have to roll a one to get it. Uh, if you roll something like a five two. Takes one off, he hits us, we're in the bar. Now look at all the shots that we have. We got threes, we got fives, we got six one, uh, you know, three one hits two. You wouldn't play five two like that, Gary. Uh, actually, you're right, he wouldn't. He would play. Uh, two off. He, oh. He would take two off. Okay, so that wasn't that was that wasn't a good example. But a um, I don't know. Maybe you're right. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, maybe you're in right. In any case, the, the worst that can happen to you, uh, well, other well, uh, big doubles will will kill you. But big big doubles are going to kill you anyway. Uh, but the worst that can happen to you is is you're back into the same position you were in, in originally, um, and 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 then you're ready for the next for the next roll. Okay. So let's look at some other combinations. Uh, what about this one? Oh, let's look at better or worse. Better or worse than the original one that we saw. Because he's got more checkers, I guess uh, we're, we're less likely to split. He's, he, he, um, I, I really don't know. I can't see any way of doing these apart from counting. Yeah, well, yeah, that is, yeah. You, you really, yeah to, to get the right answer, you really need to count, which is, you know, which is tedious. But, what I'm trying to show here is there's the pattern that we can see. Uh, yeah. That, that will give you a clue. And here it's a... Is it a blunder or just an error? It's, it's, it's an error to, to do this. Um, so, um, but it's not a big error if you did it. I, so I think, you know, kind of the main lesson is, is if you have this, I can't get it. That's where it's coming. Oh, that's weird. Okay. If you have this gap you and you roll a one, you need to consider doing, you know, doing the split play. It's actually, uh, Michi calls it the amoeba play. Um, and 
uh, and he only talks about the single line. So he wasn't even considered this. He wouldn't even he doesn't even talk about this in his book. But you can still consider it. And as you say, it's not a terrible play to do it. But if you count, and the right way to do the analysis is to count your opponent's roles. But but in general, um, it's less effective when you've got spares to play, because then your opponent can do the pick and pass. Um, oh. and, uh, that that reduces your your good shots, and you may, you may dance after the pick and pass, or you may you you know if the six open, you may, may come in behind his line, uh, and that's not uh, and that's not going to work very well. All right, let's take a look at a few. Gary, yeah. could, could we look at the uh, dice dis distribution on that just a second? Uh, you want to look at the dice after after we do the split, right? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, OK, because this is the whole reason to doing it. The whole reason for looking at it from this perspective is what is what what are your opponent's roles? So, you know, we we got the we got the one to, to to wonder whether we should split or not. So we you know we we that's fixed. But it, the real question here is, what does your opponent have? Um, so let's look at the dice distribution. Okay, so in this case, here's you know here are the bad or worst rolls. Like I said, okay, a good one example is six two. Um, if your opponent gets a 6-2, what does he do? Well, he's forced to take the 6 off, and with the 2, he can either take a 2 off and leave the double shot, or hit and leave the direct shot in the 6-1, 3-1. And if you put it back uh, so that there's two checkers on 3, what happens if you hit the dice distribution then? Am, am I... Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good way to look at it too. Um, here, I mean, these are hard to compare. It seems like you have the same numbers: the, the five twos, five threes, three two, three one. Uh, okay. These are and, and you know we're, why are these bad? Well, you've got the the bigger numbers force you to make a back move a back checker. Threes and fours also force you to move a back checker, um, and and cause you know cause problems. Uh, so like here, the six three is the worst play because now the six is forced, and the three um, the three has to come from the five. So uh, you're going to leave the direct shot. Um, hey, that's great. Thank you. Okay. So I mean, the idea is that the more spares, the more flexibility your opponent has out there, the less advantageous it is to split. But it's still, uh, you know, it's still something you need to think about. Because it's not. Oh, it's uh, it's yeah, it's not a big error even at uh, in this case. I guess we did something different here. Oh, I know. Yeah, we. I took a trigger off by accident. Um, down here. Yeah, this one. So yeah, it's not. It's not a huge error, so you always need to think about it. Let's look at some more uh, combination. This one. Um, so here, you know, we've got the we've got the chance to split, and where I would go with this is, well, now black does not have any spares left. So, uh, so you know, and again, I, Michi only talks about the single line. Here he's got kind of a double line or two points in front. So, um, but, he's, but there are no spares. Where is the 21? And this is not, uh, okay, so this is, this is a big error to do this. And let's look at a different one. Now this is this is a different set of, of one. These are more complex. Um, and the way to look at these again, I, I think you can only do it if you've got the if you do the counting. 
but here the split would be would be this. Hmm. I'd be very tempted in this setup. But I'm sorry. I'd be very tempted to do that in the, in this setup, but. Yeah. Um, uh, I can't work it out in my head. That's the... Make his threes bad, six, three, five, three, four, three. Whereas they all play nicely if you keep it. Yeah. Yeah. And here, here's, yeah, here's, this is where you kind of really have to count the, the shots. Uh, and, and, and the way to, to, to shortcut that is threes, fours, fives, and sixes are going to be bad. That's the one could be bad for black, and it's really a combination of uh, uh, six three. Well, and, here, and here's the problem with six three and six two, black does not have to play for off the six, six four, six five. Uh, black leaves, uh, leaves a double shot here. If you move it up, uh, so let's uh, so let's just count the rolls. That whoops. Um, so let, actually, let's do let's do uh, the dice distribution again after we've made the play. And so the bad rolls are going to be. Uh, the, Five one. I'm not sure why two one is a bad roll. Five four six five five four six four. These all lead the double shot. Double twos in string three threes. And all the other ones, you kind of on hold until the next play, uh, because you're gonna you're gonna lift one from the six. So you've got six bad rolls here that lead the shot. Now. Let's do the split. And now look at these rolls. Five, three, six, three, leave. Uh, you, the, the six is, the three is forced from the six. And so now you're left with a shot off the bar uh, with either a three or a six. Four one four two, five one five two. So uh, a lot of rolls uh, that that do that right off the bat. Um, okay. So the thing is, uh, looking for plays which make your opponent uh, move another checker. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's it for yeah forces you, forces your opponent to. Um, Forces him to move, and that's often the case. The advantage of splitting is it forces a, 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 one of your opponent's high points to move when you would when he doesn't want to. And the last thing Black wants to do is go six to three here and give you the shot. Yeah, Gary, there's, Gary, there's something I'm missing here because if you stay on the three and four points, I mean, you got White has so much timing. I mean, you're not, I mean, of course, I mean, you might not get a shot if, if black rolls, maybe you don't get a shot this time, but the next time or the next time after, you know, black's going to start to come off the, the, the six yeah. point with those two checkers sooner or later, yeah. and then you get a double shot, Yeah. you know? Well, let's, let's look at this one. And, and because now we're, uh, now the rolls. So now let's just look, what kind of rolls are bad for black here? Well, any six or five. Right. With a, a four. Four is bad. A six. four. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Four. Five. Sorry. Yeah. Four. Five or six. You see, that's my bad. point. Because you'll leave it. Yeah, then you shot. get a double shot. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't see the point of coming off the twenty-one and twenty-two points. In this case. Well, this isn't bad to do this. I but this is not right to do that. Wait for my shot. Uh, 
Let's look at the dice distribution again. Analyze. Okay, so there, there are, yeah, there are a whole lot of bad rolls here. When you keep that, in fact, there are, looks like over half of the rolls are bad. And here, without looking at, you know, they're less than half the rolls are bad. Right. That's still my point. bad rolls. That's my point. You can have more. Jack's point, wasn't it? The... But you stand the you stand the three and the four points, you get more bad rolls. Yeah. With with yeah with with the doubles. Yeah. So. Um, you know, looking at these, you know, then this is why Michi, to keep, at the simplest level, Michi is only talking about your, your last line. Um, and so, you know, Michi is talking about something like this. Right. Okay. And so when you see this with the last line, you yeah, know, no to, to split here, to do the amoeba play. Uh, and anything that is not the immediate play in this situation is a blunder. When you get to the, you know, to, to this situation, um, well, what about this situation? I would think that I would, I think I would split here too. Um, yeah. And it is, and it's a blunder not to split. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, uh, I think if Michi had a simple rule to, to tell you when to do this or not, he would have said so. And he kind of left it because uh, it gets very complex and you, you really have to count shots. But, uh, you know, I think the point here is to uh, recognize that when you have this gap and you can split, that you can often uh, cover more, uh, create opportunities to get the double hit. Um, and, and, and it's often very wrong not to do that. Let me look at, uh, I had a few others here. Uh, here's another interesting one. Um, and here the idea is, well, obviously you're gonna come in on the one and do, then, you, then do you go out to the four? Or do you leave it? Do you leave it back? I think I leave it back because there's lots of pick and pass, isn't there? Uh, yeah, there are a lot of pick and pass. Uh, I can't really see he's going to leave a shot with many rolls. Um, Bit of no, a funny no, position, I, 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 uh, yeah. And I, on the other hand, three three checkers on the ace point is is almost uh, always bad thing to have uh, and you may not it may be difficult to get them out let's look at the uh, the answer is to come out uh, to the 20 um, I wonder how much the gamuts play into that no about the same gamuts and I guess the idea is okay you have a chance to put them out there now if you go back on the bar you're you know you, he's only got the three point board. You have a chance to come in, and coming in deep is not so terrible. Um, but here, let's look at the dice distribution. From Black's perspective again. Wow. So, yeah, so there. So let's see, six two is a battle. So yeah, you don't leave any shots next time, but some of these rolls aren't so great. So uh, let's see, this a, well, four, four, five, five are great rolls anyway. Um, well, let's look at well, double sixes. 
Why is six, why is six two bad? You play eight eight two four two. Yeah. So six two. Play eight two. Four and two. four to three. Okay. Why well, that's not so yeah, bad. But now let's look at the dice distribution here. Um, because now you know now you're trying to you're trying to bring these checkers in and okay the two something uh well you know uh, well let's just look at it okay, now you're getting to the point where you're leaving shots so five three okay the threes don't play Th three fours and fives don't play well three fours and fives have to come here so five three you're leaving the double shot Five four leaves a double shot. Four three leaves a double shot. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know four two. Uh, four two five one gets you down. Yeah, you know, get you down to here. And now we should see some good, uh, some better, better shots. Yeah, so six sixes don't play. So any six in black pretty much other than a six, you know, one or two, uh, black leaves the, the double shot there. I'd be curious in the um, checker play on these different um, scenarios that you're talking about. For black? Yeah. So, uh, well, like a six. A just, six just, just go to checker play and, and see. I'm sorry, not check your play, but um, double action. Yeah, well, th these are going to be doubles and passes. Yeah. Um, in fact, I'm not. Yeah, with a better shooting, it's, it's probably it's almost too good to double. Because you've got 40 40 percent gamins here, right? And this this position is dangerous. I mean, it, let's look at the original one. It's a double pass. Okay, yeah, these gaps give you enough because the gamins are so high and the winning price is so high that white can't take it. But uh, it's not too good because black has some bad you know rolls coming in. Okay. Um, Let's see. I guess the, the theme in that position is not preparing for an immediate shot, but getting yourself in position by splitting for, for yeah, two yeah. Uh, next row but one. That, yes. Yeah. Which is a tricky thing to, uh, uh, to see. I mean, that, that's, you know, that's. It's just horrible big three on the ace point. Is, yeah. Um, I, you know, as, a general rule, as a general rule, if you ever have three, three checkers on your ace point, you really need to move them uh, the first chance that you get, really. Um, yeah, that, that's... Uh, because that's, you know, in most, uh, most places, you, you have one, you have a block, you have two, you have a point, and you three, you have a spare. You don't want a spare on the ace point because um, it's not, you know. Uh, here's another one. Um, Actually, let me look at, I think this one, I don't want to spend a lot, too much more time on this. Mm. Yeah, I think, yeah. So, um, you know, the option here is that we can play it, we can play the eight all the way in and keep our point we can run out and, um, you know, try to avoid the gammon, but leave ourselves open, or we can, we can do the quasi amoeba play. Um, so let's look at this and let, first of all, let's try to decide whether this is a good play. Well, actually, we shouldn't do that. 
what are the bad roles if we stay? What, what are the bad roles that, that Black has? Double six. Uh, yeah, okay, good. Yeah, double sixes. Well, double, double six, fives. double fives. Uh, double fours are okay. Not great, but. Uh, six one. Six one, yep. And. Six four. Six four, yeah. So what do we count? Uh, fives, sixes. Five six, one and five one. Five, yes, good. Thank you, Jeff. Five one. And five four. And five four, very good. Quite a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, what? Quite a lot. And five yeah. three. Four, no, not five three. Uh, no. no, four one's okay here. So what do we what do we get? Double sixes, fives is two, six one, six four is six, five one, five four is ten. So we got yeah, ten bad rolls, um, which lead a direct shot. If we come out here, um, we have a whole different uh, category. Oh, double six, double five again. Double six, double five are still bad. So what about six, six, six four? four? Six one. Six four and six one are still bad. Four one, four two. You've yes. got, yes, you've got, uh, yeah, but four, yeah, four, one and four, two are killers. I guess what about, four, one you can play if you kept the point. Pick, yeah, the pick and pass. Uh, and, you can play and, four, one, one four, four, two safety, can't you? One, one, five. Yeah, you've, yeah. So there are a lot of numbers that are pick and pass. Um, that gets you, that puts you on the bar against the four-point board. Okay, so um, so I guess you know, staying, we found like ten number, ten bad rolls for black. Uh, here we've got uh, more or less the same number, but we've also got some really good rolls for black. That put us on the bar, and particularly, you know, if we hit off the twenty-two and and pass or something like that. Um, uh, well, in addition to some jokers, you know, double ones or double twos, uh, double fours are pretty good. Um, so a lot of bad plays, a, lo a lot of uh, bad rolls for black here, but nothing too terrible. Uh, and that, we're not in a good position, but nothing too terrible either. But the other, but, but splitting um, gives gives some bad rolls, but also some very good rolls for black. So the answer here is not to split. Um, I think in general, what I found is that you know, if you, if black has checkers outside the inner board, that he may be forced to move. It's not as advantageous to split simply because you don't get the direct shot if he's forced to leave that checker. Uh, alone. Um, any case, uh, I thought those those are those are interesting. And, and again, Michi only to keep it simple. Uh, you know, Michi says if you're only think about this if you're on your last line here. Um, but I, you know, there there are some time yeah. times where you we should you should consider it, um, and then and then try to go through the numbers that, that hit. It's 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 worth doing, but you have to you have to be aware of this situation in the first place um, before you do it. And it's you know it's not easy uh, once you get to that. But uh, other than you know this position uh, where it where it should be easy, uh, and you should and you should recognize it. Or this one, you know, one like this is even better, where you've got two. Okay, um, so that that's one of the that's tough. I want to spend a little bit of time on. Uh, this one, and actually Michi spends, gives one example of this position and, um, and calls it a version for enthusiasts. Since we're all enthusiasts here, we'll, we can go over this. But you, now, um, we went over this, I think, last time. We went over this one, and this is called the Coup Classique. 
Um, and so what's the right play here for, for White? Stay back, even though you might get... Back, that, that's back right. Down. That's, that's right. sort of known, isn't it? I'm sorry? That, that's sort of quite well known. Yes, yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's well known if you've, if you've seen it before. The first time I saw it in a match, I didn't know it. It was not well known to me in Iran, which is, uh, uh, is it a blunder to do that? Where's the running number? Yeah, oh, this, this is a bigger blunder. Anyway, it is a big, it's a blunder to run from that position, to run out, because all I was worried about was, you know, saving the, the you know, the backgammon. Um, oh, what happened to my checker here? Oh, I know. I'm looking at the finals. Okay, yeah. So it's a big, it's a big blunder to run out from here. Uh, and the reason is that all black needs to do, uh, you, you do give up backhands with any doubles, um, other than ones, and then you may get the backhand anyway. But, it, but any so two, three, four, five, you give up the backhand. But anytime the black rolls a one, he's going to take one, except for double ones. He's going to take one off and come here. And now black, we're on the bar with a double shot. Um, and uh, if we can get, get if, we, if we can hit it, we have, you know, we have the prime. And if we get the second checker, then we're favored to win and we can double out. So, you know, we, we can turn this position, which is, you know, near disaster into a, into a win. Okay. So that's not, so that's the coup class C. And so you need, to, that does come up not that infrequently, but you should, it's a big blunder if you don't, if it comes up, you don't get it. Uh, but Michi's question is, what about this one? And what's the, what's the right answer here? Do we stay back? Uh, or do we I, run? I guess here, we're never going to get a double shot, I don't think. Um, yeah, I, I can't think, let's see, is there, I, is there a number that gives a double shot? Um, uh, certainly not a one, because a one, any one that you roll, black's going to go one and then off. So our only shots are going to come with, and we'll, we'll get a lot of shots here, uh, but not with ones. We'll get, you know. Six two, six three, six four, six five, uh, you know, five four, five. All those are, were they going to take two checkers off, and we'll get we'll end up with that. Yeah, we can't get a double shot, so the, the, the prize for staying is much reduced, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So yeah. So the, yeah, that's exactly right. The prize for staying is the best that we can hope for here. Um, One blot is a single blot. Yeah which then we have to roll a one to hit. So, you know, we were looking at before this position for the bar and we had two numbers to roll. So we had 20 rolls here that hit. And, and now we're looking at this where we've got 11 rolls that hit. So the number of rolls that hit, you know, are substantially reduced. And then um, if, if we do hit, you know, we're, we're, we can only get, you know, that's the last check. We're, we're one off. Yeah. So the best we can do after we hit is put them on the bar. Well, even then we've only got six or seven percent, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. And here, um, uh, why isn't this giving me, oh. Here it's it's eight percent. You know this is and this is the ideal position, uh, which we're you know we may or may not get to that once we we're all done shuffling the checkers around. Uh, you know, it, it, and if you get something like this, you're, you know you're down a percent to seven percent. So so the best we can do is get the eight percent. Um, so uh, let's see back to the original. Position. Yeah, the answer is to avoid the, the backgammon 
this is minus two, we give up the gamut, but we don't give, you know, we avoid the backgammon. Um, and, and that's because if you look at Black's roles, um, there's, uh, there's very little upside. The best we can get is a single shot. Uh, and, and if we hit that shot, the best we get is 8% chance to win. Um, that, that versus, you know, the five rolls that, that give up the immediate backgammon. Um, well, and the rolls that if we, I mean, if we get this and roll a three, two, um, uh, you know, we give up the gammon backgammon anyway. So, um, Okay, so that's it for uh, this session. Oh, thank you, Gary. A lot to think about there, about splitting. I, I was vaguely aware of it, but I didn't know how to reason it. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, the, 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 the basic play, the, the, the one that meets you against with the, where you have the gap, um, is, is important to, to remember. Um, so that you need to at least think about it. Uh, and usually it's hard to, to do the amoeba play. Uh, and there are some others, but they're harder to figure out. But if you know that you got the gap, the gap is a weakness. And we know that from, the, from you know, playing the other side, uh, you know, a lot of the rules on, on bearing in and bearing off are, you know, don't leave a gap. Uh, so in here, you know, here's why you're playing. If we leave a gap bearing in, then our, you know, our opponent can do the amoeba play and that, Improves yeah. All right, so let's get on with the chouette. Let's stop recording. Thank you, Gary. Very good.